So I'm back in an old spot. Uh, there's been a lot of bank erosion from all the storms and flooding we've had over the winter. Uh, I'm going to search along this bank. I don't think I've ever searched this section of the river before. Um, I have found some stuff here though. I found cannonballs and bullets and uh, coins and, and that sort of thing. Some shell fragments uh, as well. So could be more cannonballs in here. Could be belt buckles, anything. So uh, let's get to it. I've been searching for about 15 minutes along this muddy bank. And I swung the detector under this big root system of this tree. Way back in there, I got an iron signal. Good strong iron signal. I'll put my magnet back. I'll show you. I'll put the magnet back in there. Listen. You hear that clink? It's something solid. And it feels uh, like a musket. I can feel, I think, the wooden stock and I think uh, the hammer. Uh, it might actually be a carbine, a Civil War carbine, which is shorter, I'm hoping, because it's really embedded up in those roots. Well, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. I'm going to stick the camera back in there, but it's kind of blind because it's back in there pretty far. But the magnet's stuck to it, so that'll be your guide as to where it is. Let's see. Definitely a gun, and I'm pretty sure it's a Civil War gun. It even has the wooden stock intact. So uh, I'm going to work it loose, and I'll get the camera out as soon as I get it free. Well, it's out, and it's a musket. I'm not sure what type, but uh, check this out. Stock is completely intact. Trigger guard, hammer, rear sight, barrel bands, forearm. The whole thing is there. That is unbelievable. Uh, the wood is really soft. Uh, but I think I can preserve it if I'm careful. If I'm careful during the preservation process. Wow. Okay, here we are with our musket that we found today. I'm going to just lightly tap on it with this little hammer before I put it in electrolysis and just try to get some of the crust off of it to help the process along a little bit. Hopefully, uh, the metal is in good shape underneath there, and it won't uh, fall apart on me or anything. It would be very, very gentle because sometimes these things are so corroded that the only thing holding it together is the rust. So, I mean, if that's the case, it really isn't going to be any saving it, but Chloe is totally uninterested. This will get boring if I do this for too long, so uh, I'll get it cleaned up a little bit. I'll show you what it looks like, and then uh, I'll put in a... not sure how I'm going to do the electrolysis process. I think I'm going to put it in Chloe's uh, kiddie pool. I'll get back with you. I got it cleaned up a little uh, just by tapping it with the hammer lightly. Um, you can start to see parts. You can see the trigger there in the trigger guard. You can see the hammer. There's the rear sight. There's a sling swivel there. Barrel bands are still there. It's obviously been bent and that was probably on purpose so that the enemy could not uh, recover it and use it against them. Ramrod is missing. And I looked and I didn't see the ramrod there anywhere. I think the ramrod was gone before it was tossed because if it was bent with the with it there, it would have probably jammed in there and not come out. But. Uh, you can see the slot where it went. For now, I'm going to put it in um, a kiddie pool full of water to keep it from drying out, and I'll figure out how to uh, get the electrolysis going on it, and uh, then I'll worry about the wood after the, after the electrolysis. Uh, hopefully, somebody can give me some advice on how to how to handle that. Um, I don't want to lose the wood, but it's really really soft. Anyway, let's get it in some water. <coughs> Okay, so I've had the musket in uh, an electrolysis bath for about 24 hours, uh, and I've taken it out and picked at it a little bit here and there, uh, kind of taking a small, uh, a small hammer and a little screwdriver and kind of gently chiseled away at some of the 
uh, encrustations that were in the nooks and crannies and stuff. And it's starting to come clean. Uh, it's not there yet. I'm going to run it in the electrolysis a little longer. You have to be careful uh, with stuff like this, like a, with a musket barrel. If the, if the metal is really compromised and you put an electrolysis, it could start to get holes in it or fall apart. Um, but this one, it seems really solid. The metal's thick and solid. There's no, there's no holes in it or anything like that. So um, I've been running on a low current, uh, but I've been keeping an eye on it. It's still pretty solid. So I'm going to run it overnight, I think, and then that'll be it as far as the electrolysis. And then it'll be on to uh, figuring out how to preserve the wood and then the, lastly the, the iron itself. Um, normally, I would just uh, dunk an iron relic into a, a, a boiling paraffin bath, but uh, number one, this thing's too big, and number two, uh, if I do that, I think the wood would probably shrink considerably because it's been waterlogged for 150 years, and it would probably break apart or separate from the metal or something, and we don't want to do that. So uh, there are some alternatives that I'm looking into, and uh, I'll... Uh, Keep you updated as to as to what I what I decide to do. But anyway, take a look. It's been in the electrolysis bath, so uh, <clears throat> I don't have to worry about the wood drying out and shrinking just yet, since it's uh, uh, it's been submerged. But it's coming clean, it's starting to look more like a musket. If you look closely here, um, let's try and get it to focus. There. You'll see. <coughs> Excuse me. You'll see that there's actually the remains of a percussion cap still on the nipple. Uh, it looks like it's smashed, so it was probably fired. Um, hard to tell, but uh, anyway, there's the rear sight. Yes, there is a small hole here, and I drilled that for two reasons. One uh, is for uh, electrolysis process, so I can get good electrical contact. And the other is, uh, if I do end up putting this in a hot wax, um, and if there's a bullet in there, uh, the pressure could build, steam pressure could build, and the thing could explode. We don't want that. So, um, barrel bands are intact and are strong, as you can see. Most of the wood is there. Um, ends about there. There's the. I guess that's called a nose cap. I'm not sure, but that metal was nice and strong. That's where the ramrod would have gone in right here. Uh, of course, the ramrod is missing, unfortunately. Uh, even the muzzle is good and strong. The metal's thick. Uh, doesn't appear to be uh, compromised too badly. Uh, front sight is there. So it, uh, it's a pretty good looking piece. I have uh, high hopes for how it's going to turn out. I didn't show you the other side. Let's roll it over. Not much to see on the other side. Uh, a couple bolts, screws, I should say. Um, but yeah, it's getting there. So I'm going to put it back in the electrolysis now uh, overnight and then clean a little bit more tomorrow, clean the metal a little more tomorrow, and that'll be it. And then we'll start figuring out what to do with the wood. So this is where the musket's been living for the past uh, few days. I have to keep the wood wet because if it shrinks, because it's uh, waterlogged and, and uh, fairly rotted, if it uh, if it dries out, it'll shrink and become uh, cracked and mis uh, malformed, and we don't want that. We want to keep the shape and keep the size as close uh, as possible to its natural state. So. Uh, I'm going to take it out of this tank. I'm going to take it downstairs, and uh, I've bought some wood hardening material. I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, I'm going to make a little tank for that, and we're going to soak it in there for a few days. See you in the basement. Okay, here's my little makeshift uh, tank for soaking the musket in the wood hardener. It's just a wooden framework with a plastic part. This stuff that I'm using is SP11 waterlogged wood treatment by Preservation Solutions. Hopefully we've got enough to submerge all of the wood.
So this stuff, as I understand it, uh, preserves the wood by going into the emptied out uh, cells uh, because when wood rots, it sits under water, there's all kinds of organisms and, and uh, such that uh, eat the cellulose out of the wood, leaving these empty cells or tube-like structures, and they fill up with water, and it keeps its shape reasonably well until it dries out. Once it dries out, uh, those little tube structures collapse, and uh, the wood shrinks and cracks and checks and just turns into a, a big mess. So this stuff, uh, as I understand it, will go into the wood and uh, once it's dried out, it leaves behind resin that strengthens those structures and keeps them from shrinking as the, uh, as the water dries out of it. So anyway, it's going to sit in this solution for a couple days, and then I'll take it out uh, and let it slowly air dry, uh, because that's what they tell me I should do. And once it's dry, I'll then put it in a, uh, do my normal wax treatment that I've told you about in, in other videos uh, to preserve the iron. The wax will boil off any moisture that's in the iron, uh, desiccate the iron and seal it. And it should help seal the wood too. And I spoke with the folks at Preservation Solutions and they don't seem to think that that will be a problem. Uh, uh, so that's what I'm going to do. Uh, it's the best idea I can come up with and I hope it works because I'd really hate to see this thing uh, fall apart on me. You know, it's, it's probably the best relic I've ever found, so I really want to make sure I do it the right way. So, uh, the next time you see it, I'll be taking it out of here and hanging it to dry, uh, and then uh, it'll be on to the wax process. Probably, and, and I'll probably uh, go over the iron some more and chip away at some of the, the, the crud on it, but uh, for the most part, I think the iron is finished, and I don't want to, I don't want to overdo it uh, and have it ended up breaking something uh, so anyway see you when it comes out here she is it's been uh, soaked in wood hardening treatment and and dried out the wood has shrunk some uh, you can definitely see it around the lock plate there and there's some cracks but those cracks don't go all the way through they're just like the outer layer I think it still seems pretty uh, solid um, some small cracks but uh, that's to be expected uh, with waterlogged wood, uh, you can see it's definitely shrunk around the uh, around the butt plate there. So hopefully it won't uh, it won't shrink too much more or any more, and it won't, won't crack or anything like that any worse than what it has. Um, yeah, we're gonna find out. Okay, well she's in there, most of it. Um, the stock and the lock and all that stuff is already in there, and that's going to take the longest amount of time to dry out. Uh, the rest of the barrel and the full, little bit of forearm there shouldn't take too long. So, I have a little way to go yet to get up the temp. It needs to be above 212 to boil the moisture off. Um, sun is going down, so hopefully it won't take too much longer just to heat up. It's uh, I should have this thing. Uh, insulated and I don't uh, the next time I use it I will get some pipe insulation and put on it. Sometimes I forget stuff. A lot of times I forget stuff. Well it's finally up to temp and bubbling which means it's boiling off the water but now I have this problem. There's a thunderstorm coming. I'm hoping it goes around me.